Good afternoon, everyone. Since this morning, I've been hearing about hydrogen production plants, hydrogen liquefaction plants, hydrogen refueling stations. Well, all these plants have one thing in common. You want to have them up and running, right? In order to optimize the performance and to maximize the profitability. And one key equipment which determines the availability of these plants is the compressor. And guess what? That's what we are experts in since 180 years, by the way. My name is Mathieu Rob. I am Vice President of Global Sales at Bocard Compression, based in Winterthur, Switzerland. And today I'm going to explain to you how Bocard Compression is maximizing the uptime for large capacity hydrogen compressors. Here's another view of the hydrogen value chain from production to end use. If you look at it starting from the left to the right, we can see that there are compressors almost everywhere. That's where you see the, the orange ticks. Starting from the production, whatever the color of the hydrogen, the hydrogen typically comes at a pressure between 1 and 40 bar. Uh, and then you have two choices. Either you want to keep it in gaseous form, in this case you want to compress it in order to increase the density, or you want to convert it to liquid hydrogen, to ammonia or something else, and typically there will be some compressors in the process. Then when you want to transport it and to store it, again you want to increase the pressure. Through a gas pipeline, typically the pressure will go up to 40 to 80 bar. Uh, trailer filling station, that's a little bit higher, 350 to 500 bar. And if you want to transport it liquid, like on a ship, technology is still under development, but it's coming, then you need to handle the boil of gas with compressors. On the end use side, we talk a lot about hydrogen refueling stations. Here you want to increase the capacity up to 350, 700 bar in the tank, which means that on the compressor side, you need to compress a little bit higher, 500, 900 bar. And by the way, we talk a lot about hydrogen refueling stations, but today, most of the hydrogen is still used in the industry. And for these different use cases, we have different types of compressor, starting with the smaller one on the top right corner, the diaphragm compressor, they are typically used in hydrogen refueling stations, smaller ones. They have a flow of roughly 45 kilograms of hydrogen per hour, but they can go up to pretty high pressure. These can be delivered in a standardized container package, almost plug and play. If you want to stay at high pressure but then increase the flow, uh, that's where a vertical piston compressor would be very suitable. This is the one we use typically in uh, trailer filling stations or in heavy duty hydrogen refueling stations. Here the flow can go up to 200 kilogram per hour uh, and today we are able to deliver this compressor up to 550 bar non-loop, completely oil free, reciprocating technology. There are other cases where you need even larger flow but at reduced pressure. This is the case for hydrogen liquefaction or for pipeline injection. Here we would use large capacity horizontal compressors um, that can go to 80 bar, for example. And I will use this example of this horizontal large capacity all-free compressor to show you how to maximize the uptime. It's a combination of three main factors. First factor is state-of-the-art, best-in-class, oil-free compression technology. At Bocat Compression, we design our own compressors, of course, but also the components. Compressor is important, but even more important for the uptime, for the availability, for the durability, is the sealing technology and the ring technology. We invest quite a high amount of R&D into developing our own sealing materials and the sealing configuration, the different rings that you put in here. We have our own test compressor that we keep on running to see how long each type of ring, each type of material can take. Right now, we are developing, for example, a test compressor together with our partner Shell that can go up to 900 bar, non-lube, for high capacity. 
The second key success factor is smart machine monitoring. Some of you may be familiar with Prognos. They have quite a unique system for monitoring and real-time diagnosis. Here we collect a lot of data. We combine them together, which can give us some patterns which we can analyze, which will then help to, uh, uh, to get an idea of the lifetime of the wear parts. And if you combine that with even better algorithm, always developing a pinch of AI, then we can really predict what would be the optimum maintenance cycle and how to optimize the compressor life cycle. Third key success factor is the maintenance, globally proven maintenance setup. Here we rely on decades of global experience. First, you need to have the global network of service experts, uh, and then you need to have the expertise, the know-how, how to interpret the data. It's one thing to get a lot of data about your running compressor. It's another one to be able to interpret your data and then to draw some conclusions out of it. We know by experience that there are really two types of components which have a critical impact on the lifetime. That's the rings, the ceiling rings, and that's the valve. And that's where the expertise of the field, serving, field service comes into play. When you combine these three success factors together, that's when you can optimize then the uptime of your compressor. 27,000 hours is the amount of runtime that we have achieved on the field with oil-free hydrogen compressors. That's a little bit more than three years of uninterrupted operation. You don't want your compressor to be the bottleneck. That's where we are today. That's what we are developing. If you want to know more about our technology, if you want to talk to our technical experts, I invite you to come to our booth just behind over there. We'll be happy to have a chat with you. Thank you very much for your attention.